So here we go in grammar. Today we're going to learn about direct objects pronouns. Direct object pronouns. Okay, so uh, to start it off, as I always do, I try to explain something in English first. Does anybody already know? Let's see, I give you the sentence. I love pizza. Okay, so j'aime la pizza. Okay, uh, it, can anyone name in that sentence what the direct object is? Pizza. 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 So I'll write this real quick. So for example, I love pizza in English. I is the subject. Love is the verb. And then pizza is the direct object. It's what, um, like basically, I always try to say that the direct object is what gets the action of the verb. So the subject does the action, the verb is the action, and the direct object receives the action. So you can't walk around going, oh, I love, I love, you love what? What do you love? That's, it's requiring a direct object. Okay? So, in English, of course you'd say like, um, J'aime or j'adore la pizza. Okay, but remember how with on we learned that you can take out pizza and use on and say like I love it or well that would be the direct object pronoun version. You'd say like I eat some of it. That's what on did. So now I'm going to teach you how to say instead of I love pizza, a direct object pronoun would be I love it. So I'm going to teach you those words for it and then. Okay, so here we go. Alright, so um, let's start with a masculine, a masculine uh, one. Okay, so you could say, for example, j'aime, uh, j'aime le stylo. Very basic. I like the pen. Okay, so what is the direct object in the sentence? Stilo. Stilo. Le stilo. Okay, this is technically the definite article, but it sticks together. So underline both. Le stilo. And so what we're going to use in its place is le. That's the direct object. So direct object pronoun. So over here on the side, do this for me real quick. I probably should have started with this. Put masculine and feminine and singular and plural. So the direct object pronouns, for masculine singular, it is le. For feminine and singular, it's la. And for plural, have a guess? Le. For both. Le, la, and le. And you still can have the L apostrophe if the next word starts with a vowel. Okay. <clears throat> so, since listilo is masculine, now I'm going to rewrite the sentence. I have to take out listilo. I'm not saying I like the pen. Now I'm saying I like it. Okay? And so you have to take out listilo, and I'm going to use which pronoun? Le. Le. I'm going to use le. And the rule still is that it goes before the verb. If there's one verb in the sentence, it goes before the verb. So what would my sentence look like? Je. Je. And I would normally say L-E, but my verb starts with a vowel. So I'm going to use L apostrophe here and say je lem. And so that means I like it. Okay? So you have to already talk about the item, je le stilo. So then you know, oh oui, je lem. I like it. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple more examples. Then I'll take questions. Okay. So, let's do a feminine version with a different verb. Let's go with um, to Harl um, le français. So, to Harl français, what's the direct object in the sentence? Français, and I'm going to underline le with it because that also has to come out. And so, how can I say you speak it? To 
What comes before the verb? L, very good. To L, Harl. So there's one with a vowel, one just by itself. Let's do a feminine one. Uh, let's see. Eel. Um, eel. Um, trying to think of a verb that I could use. Ah, here we go. Eel port. La chemise. Do you remember what il port la chemise means? He wears the shirt. He wears the shirt. Okay, so now, uh, again, what's the direct object? La chemise. Chemise, and we'll put underline la with it. And so how can I say he wears it? Il la port. Il la Port. And a plural one real quick. Let's go with new. Um, we'll still use port. New portal. Uh, les chapeaux. New portal, les chapeaux. Do you remember what um, le chapeau or les chapeau is? Uh, hat. hat. Very good. So what's the direct object? Le chapeau. Le chapeau. Well, chapeau. Very good. And so how can you say we wear them? New lay. New lay. Do I put chapeau? Portant. It's really important that you don't write chapeau after this. A lot of students will try to write new les portant les chapeaux. But you're saying we wear them the hats. You, when you're saying them, you've already referred to the hats. Okay? Um, let me show you real quick what a negative one would look like. So, with, for example, il la porte, if you want to say he doesn't wear il, it, negative, you would say il ne la Court, ha. So the la goes in between the n and pa. It has to stick right before the verb. So it's always squeezing in the n and pa. <coughs> okay. And technically, there are a few more direct object pronouns. But technically, you can also have, um, I'm going to add them down here. More direct object pronouns are m, t, nu, and vu. And <clears throat> with these, you basically, they kind of already use them. So there's not usually as much of like, take this thing out and use m in its place. But you'll see it in a, a sentence and then hopefully now you'll realize what it means. So you might see, for example, a sentence like, je t'écoute. <clears throat> je t'écoute. Oh. Have a guess at what that means? I'm listening, I'm listening to you. They already feel like, oui, oui, je t'écoute. Okay, or a question could be, if I want to say like to you guys, like, are you guys listening to me? I could ask you, Mekute, are you listening to me? Vu mekute. And so, uh, again, if they have a vowel, then you still have to do the m apostrophe or te apostrophe. But nu and vu. If I wanted to say like I'm listening to you guys, I would say je vous écoute. So. Um, anyways, those are all the direct objects.